Hey everyone, uh, welcome to The Huddle and thanks for taking some time to talk to us today. Um, I'm here with Stephen Williams. Uh, before I get into it, I just want to say thanks to you, Stephen, for taking the time to do this. Uh, we've had a, our companies have had relationships for a very long time, yeah, for a while. But I want to start by talking about talking about you. Well, first, thanks for, for having me here. It's very uh, good to be here with you. And our companies have had a very long relationship and we greatly value uh, your business. So me, uh, I'll start with that. So I was born a uh, small town uh, in Oklahoma. Uh, so small, there wasn't even a Walmart there when I, when I grew up or a stoplight. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I always tell people I you know, was farm to table before it was cool. We lived on the land and you know, one of the things I, uh, you know, I, uh, I learned most uh, growing up was just value hard work. You know, I worked my way uh, through school working in supermarkets. So, so I feel like I've really been in the grocery business my whole career and 25 years at PepsiCo and it's been a great, uh, great run. As you said, I, I have the privilege of leading uh, PepsiCo food business for North America. And uh, we have a great business with Walmart and it's, uh, it's just, it's a good place to be. I was thinking about you know, your personal story, the youngest of nine yeah. working grocery stores so you've been working on teams since the day you were born, really. I see where you're going with it. We have been. We were we were a big team, and I remember the days uh, Dad would break us up and say, "Hey, you guys go. We're gonna go to Porter, mm -hmm. Peach Capital, yeah. right? Peach Capital, and you're gonna pick peaches, right? This group's gonna go over here, right? You're gonna go pick okra. So yeah, we've been working on teams, doing things that uh, built teams together. I, I, it's funny you say pick okra. I remember as a kid on my grandfather's farm, that was the job you never wanted because it had those kind of spiny, and yeah. you know, I had to go yeah. either pick okra or tomatoes. The watermelons were the best because you could put a couple in a bucket and just walk a lot. That's right. We got a lot in common. Credo has just always been an organization that yeah. is so focused on frontline yeah. employees, frontline associates who are out every day That's right. going to the, the warehouse, driving around, stocking shelves, working with customers. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot of value and alignment between your background and what you've done to yeah. running that team. I'd love to hear more about it. Yeah, yeah. If you think about our business, I mean, you said it. Um, you know, it really is one of the last true seed to shelf businesses, right? Mm -hmm. Sell the farmer the seed, mm -hmm. right? Buy it back as a finished product. Turn into something delicious. Put it in a bag. Put it in a box. Put it on a truck. All take it to shelf. That's right. Uh, it takes an enormous amount of people in that value chain uh, all the way uh, from seed to shelf. And I uh, think about it this way, we've got about 70,000 people in the U.S., about 60,000 of those either make something, move something, or put it on a shelf, uh, make, move, or sell. And, and it does take uh, an enormous amount of coordination, collaboration across the value chain. We call it kind of end-to-end. Uh, management uh, in order to drive execution uh, all the way through the shelf and you know and one of the things I love about this company I've always loved about it and I think it's a lot very similar to Walmart in this way it really is a leadership Academy because you start at a very early age or at an early point in your career managing large teams of people right and getting things done through others and so by the time you're in bigger, a much bigger job, you've had the opportunity to lead a store or a team, a, a fleet of trucks and uh, of leaders, and so it's a very similar in that nation. We're not as many people as you, but very, very similar. And so, fast forward to March 2020, what was it like for you and the team, and what things that you had to rely on? keep the business moving with yeah. such uncertainty all across the country. Yeah, it was such a disorienting time. I remember thinking, you know, I mean, what is going on? I mean, it was so disoriented. And I tell you, the, the, our, the team's ability to continue to keep the business moving mm -hmm. is still to this day something that amazes me. Right, I think the, the resiliency and agility of our frontline teams and our management teams to brace for what we knew was gonna be 
very difficult. We had no idea how difficult. We knew early on, it's like we were closing plants, you know, because, you know, some, you know, someone would get sick. We were, we were missing sales calls, which, you know, we, we hate to do. We always want to deliver our promise to be at your store when we say we're going to be at your store. And so it took, it took about a month for us to really get, start to get oriented and get in the groove. But I'll tell you, I think the thing that uh, helped us, we always, we always say we're at our best when things are at their worst. And I see that with Walmart as well. You're always there, right, when things are going difficult in a community, at a store. And that's what we saw. We said this is, we, we, we've been through difficult times before. And so we pulled together. I'll tell you the thing that, I think we did most is high level of engagement uh, with the front line, high level of engagement, frequency and intensity of discussions, and making sure we were dealing with, with great care, right? Providing protections is once we knew what to do. I think you and I remember us talking, mask, no mask. What are we, you know, what, 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 what are we supposed to do? And so I think making sure we were taking in all the information and moving rapidly to protect the front line, as well as make sure we were able to service our customers and make sure we had products for our consumers on store shelves. Well, I remember one of our discussions trying to figure out what the term essential worker was. And there were so many things that, <laughs> so many things today that I think we could both talk about that I'm not sure we ever wanted to know, but we've had yeah. to learn and adjust. But you know, your, your team, I know, they know a lot, but they probably have no idea how many times you and I talked in the yeah. evening or on the weekend, yeah. early on a Sunday yeah. morning, just trying to figure out what to do. And it was so helpful for so many of us to be able to collaborate. And, yeah. and I could tell you what I was hearing from my first line and compare notes what we were hearing yeah. from the CDC and the media. And there's yeah. just so much to work through. Um, and then, um, you know, thinking about as we, we figured out how to operate, you know, then we get into the summer months and we have. Yeah. You know, the midst of Minneapolis and George Floyd was murdered. Yeah. And then we're dealing with, you know, social unrest on yeah. top of that. And I remember just so many people were already stressed and tired. And, yeah. You know, what was it like in, yeah. in, in Free to Lay and Pepsi Foods at that time? It, it was the same. It was almost like these waves, shock waves kept coming through. And that was a big one, if you remember. And it was another time where we did a lot of self reflection. And I remember you and I talked during that time, too. It was scary. Uh, you know, and uh, we quickly, as a company, said we we have got to get together, pull together, and and figure out how want to diffuse this in our own company. But then the next step is, hey, what are we going to do in our communities, right? What are we going to do for people? What should we be doing differently? Uh, and so we had a, a, a series of roundtables that weren't roundtables because they were on Zoom, <laughs> but the same difference with, with many, many community leaders, but mostly with our internal constituents. A lot from the front line, as well as our front line management, as well as our ERGs like Mosaic, uh, which is our African-American ERG, and Adelante is our uh, Hispanic ERG. And <clears throat> Out of those discussions, we uh, made the decision uh, to launch into uh, what we call our REJ, which is our racial uh, equality journey. Uh, and and we, we, you know, we committed to put our money where our mouth was, both in business, communities, and uh, with people. Um, and significantly, $800 million dollars uh, against those three planks uh, for the African American community, and I tell you what, it was uh, it was one of I believe the best decisions that we made at the time, and 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 I don't think they weren't empty promises. I mean, we sat down and every plank of the business, every people plank, every commitment on, you know, how many black managers we were going to hire, how many people we we're going to promote. Um, it, it was real, and I think that gave, and we were transparent. I heard you talking about earlier uh, this week about how uh, the commitments that, that you made and how you're tracking them and you're being transparent about what you're doing. We did the same thing, and I think it will, it will 
proof will be in the pudding long term. We've made great progress, right? But I will tell you, it was a time that woke up a lot of America to the, to the injustices. And I will tell you, I think PepsiCo has a, a long history of uh, being a change maker, right? Long history, particularly in diversity and inclusion. You know, we, uh, the first African-American executive officer of any company uh, back in, in the 60s, right? The first African-American sales force uh, back in the 40s when nobody was, <laughs> you know, nobody was hiring African-Americans. So we've got a long history of justice, but I'll tell you, it, it made us pause uh, and say, hey, have we made the kind of progress that we should make? Uh, and double down, and it's been uh, it's been a good journey to be on. We talk about our relationship, and we talked about the company relationship broadly, you know. And yeah, we work, you know, with your stores. We work with your merchandising teams. We worked a lot with your HR teams during COVID. Uh, you know, I have to mention the sustainability teams and how they work together. And we talk about what's important, and as we think about the future. Um, you know, we uh, launched PEP Plus re positive, right? PEP Plus is PEP positive uh, recently that really is about, you know, positive uh, agriculture, positive value chain, and, uh, and positive choices. So the products that we deliver into the communities. And so if you think about how important doubling down on not just your racial journey, but really being a good company is for the future, regardless of what the environment is, I think is job number one for, for companies like ours that have, uh, you know, meaningful engagement with consumers and customers. The footprint that we have, the footprint that you have, we have an obligation moving forward to even be better companies, right, in the, in the communities that we serve. And I think that to me is probably the next wave of must do's and how and how we think about uh, how we think about true leadership uh, being a, uh, a company that is the steward of our planet and our communities. Well, and, th and those topics are they're so important because we're local in so many communities. We're yeah. local in about 5,000, but if you take your network, you're local in yeah. you know, hundreds of thousands of communities, yeah. you know, tens of thousands. And, and so if there's something we can do together that makes a meaningful difference, it can yeah. help other organizations and vice versa. We're learning from each other and so some right. of these big topics like whether it's it's racial justice, equity, or the environment, yeah. we shouldn't think of those as competitive advantages. We yeah. should think of those as the yeah. right thing to do and we've got to make progress. That's right. We've got generations after us, whether they're right. leadership generations in the company or just yeah. generations of humans, we've got to make a difference. We're in people business. I mean, at the end of the day, whether it's consumers, Communities are your front line. I mean, and we don't have, neither of us, have a business without people that run stores and run routes, right? right? Make things in a factory. We don't, have, we don't have a business. And I think sometimes, you know, leaders forget that or don't put as much emphasis on the fact that the front line of this company, we work for them. They are the reason, right, we're able uh, to do what we do. And I think it's important that we continue to ensure that they understand that, that they know that, right? Because sometimes, hey, and you have to do that in visible ways. It's not just pay, but it is about pay. It's not, it's not just benefits, but it is about benefits. It's also about working conditions and are, you, are, 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 are the job structured in a way that allows everyone to succeed and feel great about what they're doing in the company. And I will tell you, I think we have made great progress, but we have a lot of work still left to do. Uh, we have a lot of work left to do. And so I think uh, making sure that there's equity uh, in the company across the board, and it's not just about racial equity, it's about does everybody feel like they can reach their full potential um, in your company? And so we have a lot of work going on around that uh, as we think about even the frontline uh, 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 jobs, right? We have a lot of frontline jobs, just like we were just having a chat about the different categories of jobs and how do you make sure, I mean, we're a 24 seven business just like you are, and that probably won't change, right. but at the end of the day, how do you make that the best 24 seven type business that you can? Yeah, Steven, this is great. 
we're just fortunate to have you to, to come on and think about yeah. and talk about not only our relationship in the companies, yeah. but the leadership role that we can provide for things yeah. that are much bigger in the industry and sustainability and yeah. equity and other other topics. or long list we could go into, okay. but certainly uh, yeah. appreciate the time to get to talk about these. Appreciate you, man. You bet. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.